And again, a great place for us to show off combat in general. Uh, so I think we're gonna jump in here. Andrew's gonna start, just start battling and we can start talking about uh, everything you're seeing on the screen. All right. <laughs> Oh, he just about the cadavers right away. Oh my god. <laughs> we're, start, we're starting off strong. We're oh my god. Is that, is that, was that Kujio? Oh my god. That's so cool. Yeah, so that, you'll, you'll notice right away, like when we use Avada Kedavra, that guy's health bar went from instant to zero. And we really are trying to honor the way Avada Kedavra works in the game, uh, even in some pretty extreme situations. Um, you'll notice that, like, the, the meter takes up a, a lot longer to yeah, a little uh, cool kind down. of build up as a way to kind of deal with its extreme power, just so that it's still fun to use. And then there's some some ways that we'll probably talk about to 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 adjust that. But I don't know. I, I don't know if there are things on the screen that you just have questions about. Well, like, for, like I see like little blue things pop, uh, pop up <laughs> from yeah. the enemies. Also, before, like that sign, well, it's like, so in the community, we call it the ancient magic sign. And I don't know if that's how it's called yeah. <laughs> in the game. <laughs> So the community is astute. So uh, on the development side and in player facing in the game, we reference that as your ancient magic community. Oh, <laughs> so it is ancient magic. <laughs> that is, yeah. So as your as your abilities in the game keep growing and you become exposed to some of the secrets about your own kind of mystery and your own your own abilities, um, you start unlocking new powers. So one of those powers you'll see the R1 button appearing uh, throughout the game. Uh, that's an ancient magic throw, we call it, that allows you to kind of like draw an object to you and fling it at an enemy. Um, okay. But whenever you see the R1 or the L1 plus R1 appear over somebody's head, mm -hmm. um, that's an ability to cast a, a very devastating and powerful uh, ancient magic spell oh, to do a ton of damage against the character. I see, I see. And the way that manifests itself uh, depends on the type of enemy that you're fighting. And you'll see a, a wide variety of enemies in here that are pressuring the player in different ways. You'll notice there's there's uh, abilities that kind of bubble up under the player as he's fighting, that force him to move. And there's different ways that we want the player to kind of move around on the battlefield. And that's actually a good link to the Ancient Magic meter in general. And the reason why I say that is because as you're doing different things in combat, you're protegoing and you're doing different abilities and you can kind of speculate with your talents, there are different ways to get that meter to build faster and faster. But one of the most effective base ways to build up that meter fast, that way you can launch these devastating attacks whenever you want to, is is to actually perform combos. So you see that combo appearing, uh -huh. and it's almost like your your emotions are building up, mm -hmm. and then basically that builds up enough that you can attack someone. But as the combo meter builds up, at some point you strike someone, and a, a piece of their magic kind of falls out of them. You'll see the blue orbs in in the in the game world, and there's something that only you can see in in the narrative in the world. And it's another reason to move around on the battlefield if you can go up and collect those things and. But like, I mean, they give big, big jumps to that ancient magic meter as we're playing. We're talking a lot about uh, about spells uh, and magic here, but I think there's another huge component of combat, and that is the the tools that you can bring to combat as well to kind of uh, change the way you play. And I think Mackenzie uh, knows a lot about what's going on with the plants yeah. and potions. And so the the tools are really interesting because they're basically like a prior investment. So you can bring the potions and the plants that you grow in the Room of Requirement to combat uh, to essentially kind of help you um, defeat enemies a lot quicker and, and more efficiently. So some of the tools that you'll see here are like the rock skin potion. So uh -huh. that is something that basically covers your skin in this like rocky material that uh, reduces the incoming damage that you're receiving. So against big enemies, hard-hitting enemies like trolls, um, that's super helpful. <laughs> um, so much like she's <laughs> just destroying. The, the troll just collapsed from one of the kid uh, Obviously, we have the Wigan World Potion as well, uh, which increases your health. And then we have the Focus Potion. So when Alan talks about having to balance Avada Kedavra with a long cooldown, because obviously it's an instant kill. Uh, one thing that you could do is brew a focus potion, and that will increase um, how quickly your, your cooldowns uh, regain. Right. Oh my god. There's just so much like a, a versatility like in what the character is doing to the troll right now. Like he's just bouncing around around the arena. He's like not... And the troll makes him move around too, looks like. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that our plants are violent. <laughs> yes, and so that's like when we're talking about the almost the uh, setup of the arena, you also have plants that you can fight with. And so we have things like the venomous tentacula that you can put down and it acts like a turret and it just kind of shoots enemies around the battlefield. 
That is so cool. This is like a truly like Hufflepuffian way to approach <laughs> the battle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, that was super important to us, that there were these like multiple ways. And so you can see there's there's a ton of different things you can use. Uh, the mandrake is one, so you can pull it out and it stuns with its like piercing cry, these enemies uh, in, in a radius. And another thing I want to call out uh, that we're seeing on the side of the screen here is these, these dueling feats, which I, I love because I love anything that prompts me to play a game in a different way, a unique way. I don't want to get stuck in my style, you know? Uh, and, and so this is a way to, if you want to get stuck in your style, go for it. If you just want to blast people with spells, go for it. But we also want to uh, have some things over here that may make you use certain plants or certain potions or block more or... Yeah, we mentioned the field guide challenges um, uh, in the prior stream. And the field guide challenges, this is the way that the field guide manifests like challenges for you to do in combat. And mm -hmm. exactly to your point, um, we just wanted a way to encourage players to, to explore the different systems, to help them decide, to just kind of practice with them and explore what they want to do. Because there really are so many different ways that you can push talents. Uh, when you see the, the green X's on characters, that's right. and that's kind of, a, through your talents, you can unlock this kind of cursing mechanic that sort of like links the fates of these different characters on the battlefield. That way, uh, as you get the, the, as you're cursing different characters, they all begin sharing damage. And so, we have things like Avada Kedavra, which is the insta-kill, but if you curse everyone before you insta-kill this one guy, they can all drop dead for that kind of ultimate golden so cool. oh, 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 fantasy. Oh, oh, oh. And so oh my God. <laughs> there, are, there are dark arts fantasies, there's fantasies about being more of a defense against the dark arts character, things like that, that misty step that you see um, occasionally being used on the battlefield. And we can also spec into our potions and plants to make them more powerful and more efficacious. So it's wow. all about which type of player you feel like you are and whether or not you want to play with prep on the fly or with deliberation. And those are all different options. That is so cool because like it's like I see so much like going on on the screen with so much complexity. And I, I want to just try it myself, like which style works best. I mean, I feel like it's the dark art is going to be the easiest <laughs> route, but I, you're, that you're ancient magic, to be honest, feels like much more powerful than just the dark arts.